Um, so I'm going to talk about co-ops. A bit about uh, kind of my sense of what co-ops are, some of the uh, sort of um, misapprehensions about co-ops that exist out there and so on. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit, the kind of models that uh, that are organized under co-ops and so on. And then uh, in in a sense what it is that I, that makes me think that co-ops are part of the solution. Uh, most of my, uh, my co-op experience I have to say is in worker co-ops. Uh, for 17 years I was part of a fair large worker co-op here in Vancouver and um, and left it in 1996 to form a, another co-op. I'm part of a worker co-op now called uh, uh, DevCo, FWC Development Co-op and, and the work we do uh, is going out and helping people start their own co-ops. So when people in a community have a, an idea about forming a co-op to meet a community need, we can go and provide them with some supports around the, the technical side of the organization and so on. Let me just start talking first about what a co-op is. <coughs> Um, people often, I think, are confused around this, but ultimately co-op is a business model. Um, you know, co-ops are used for a lot of purposes, and, and in fact, uh, a co-op can be a non can emulate a nonprofit society just as easily as it can emulate a business model. And in fact, if you structure a co-op right, and it is possible under the Co-ops Act to structure a co-op, that can be a charity. So, so while you have nonprofit societies, really there are only three ways to incorporate in the province. So you've got your Societies Act. You can incorporate under the Societies Act, in which case you're a nonprofit society. You can incorporate under the Co-ops Act, in which case you're a co-op. You can incorporate under the Companies Act, in which case you're a company. So in that sense, when I say I, I see co-op as part of the part of the uh, part of the solution and one of the alternatives, because co-ops don't reward capital. That's not the case with co-ops. Co-ops reward their members. So what happens with that is when a group of people start a co-op uh, to carry on a business, usually some sort of community need, some sort of need they want to address, if there is an economic benefit that arises from that, that economic benefit gets spread back to those same people. The same people that participated in the activities are the people that reap the rewards, the economic rewards of the business. You see that mostly in farm co-ops and so on, uh, producer co-ops, where, where producers sell their products out to the co-op, the co-op sells the product. In a year when the co-op makes a profit, those profits go back to the farmers. One of the things that I often hear, I hear criticisms of co-ops, particularly when co-ops get big, you know, about, well, that's not really a co-op anymore. Now, that's, and, and, and I just wanted to put out this comment, this statement. Co-op is an ownership model. It's not a management model, okay? So, so if, there's, if a co-op is, is not being like a co-op, in other words, in some way, that's not a function of the, well, in, in, it's only indirectly a function of the ownership. It's only indirectly a function of the co-op model. It's more, more usually, it's a, a function of the, the management conventions that are out there. You know, because one of the things about the North American economy is it has developed a management model that's unmatched for what it does in the world. Man the, the North American model of management uh, and models, I should say, of management are very effective for what they do, very effective in running corporations. So lots of times if a co-op, that, that's where managers get trained. You go to university and you study management, that's what you learn. You know, if you, if you any of the management schools, you go to the Sauter Business Institute, you don't hear about co-ops, you don't hear about serving a membership, you hear about how do you maximize return. And that generally means exploiting or getting rid of the externalities, your labor, the, the, the environment around you, all become externalities to what you're doing. Um, so while some co-ops, some larger co-ops in particular, take on a fairly conventional management model, there's still co-ops and the bottom line is still, they're locally owned, they're going to stay locally owned, and the people that benefit from the operation of that business are in the community that the co-op's located in. I don't care whether it's a federated store, whether it's Otter Co-op out around Abbotsford Way, you know, or, or whether it's the East End Storefront Co-op on Commercial Drive, or the housing co-op you live in, or whatever. It's the people that it's serving are the ones that are going to get the benefit. And it's, it's generally a, a community benefit. 
when co-ops operate, they when a co when you incorporate a co-op, you incorporate following uh, a basically seven basic principles, and these are the same all over the world. It doesn't matter if you incorporate a co-op here or in China or in Mongolia, um, which is another of the places that I was working with the co-op groups. Um, the, they all have the same. They all have the same seven principles that they operate on. Democratic control is one of the principles, which means it doesn't matter how much you invest, it's one member, one vote. If you, have, if you buy one chair in the co-op and, and Chris here buys 100 chairs in the co-op, you both have the same voting control. That voting control extends to your right to run to the bo for the board of directors. Anyone, if you're a member of a co-op, has a right to run for the board of directors. So you can actually insert yourself into the control structures in, in, uh, in, in any of those situations and, um, and, and have some, some vestige of control, some personal vestige of control. So, uh, so democratic control is one. Uh, open and voluntary membership. Co-ops do not uh, uh, discriminate based on, uh, on on culture, based on background, based on any of that when they're accepting memberships. Uh, so, so it's it's open membership and it's voluntary membership. You cannot compel someone to join a co-op by virtue of giving them some other sort of um, benefit. Now, you might say, well, what about worker co-ops? You know, if a worker co-op, like if they're going to work in the co-op, don't they have to be a member? And in fact, that's true. That's true. If usually, the, the laws in Canada, the ones that, that do say anything about worker co-ops, say that basically 75% of your workers have to, be, have to have access to membership. And 75% of your membership have to be employees. So, so that sounds like you're holding out employment as a, as a condition of membership. You know, a case could be made for that. But, uh, but worker co-ops are, in fact, governed by their workers, by the people that work there. Um, economic participation by members. You can't become a member of a co-op without buying a share in the co-op. Uh, it can be a, could be a five dollar share if it's a non-profit type of co-op. Canada Revenue Agency has now decided it has to be a one dollar share, um, so, but it, but it could also be a five thousand dollar share if you're moving into many of the housing co-ops now or the or the uh, uh, sort of community co-ops that are buying farms and stuff are going up to like five thousand dollars a share and sometimes even more. Um, the, and the thing about there are others: cooperation among cooperatives, member commitment to member education and development. Uh, uh, concern for community is, a, is one that was just in 1995 I believe was added to the, to the actual co-op values. Uh, which means that and in fact it was just a more or less a declaration of fact rather than something that would, would apply from here on in that co-ops do are concerned with and do involve themselves in the communities where they're located. Cooperation among cooperatives really in um, in many ways uh, extends beyond uh, just the, the sense of, you know, well, if you're a co-op, you should buy from co-ops. And that co-ops kind of, they, they have a tendency to form federations of co-ops. And one of the activities after I left my worker co-op and, and started the other one, one of my activities was to help set up the, uh, uh, a national federation of worker co-ops. And, uh, and it's, it's uh, a very vital little organization now and just, just booming right along. I have to say, after coming out of the session that we just had there, you know, I, <laughs> I always have a great respect for people from Quebec because in people in, in Quebec, co-ops are, if not a dominant part of the economy, they're a huge part of the economy. You know, it's like uh, most of the, uh, this two-thirds of the forest industry at least at one time was owned by worker co-ops. Um, the ambulance service, about a third of the provincial ambulances are worker co-ops. You know, so they, they have these massive worker co-ops there and there's a whole bottom to top structure for helping to finance worker co-ops, helping to organize worker co-ops. It's all there. Um, and, uh, and I always have a certain, and a certain admiration for that, but also it's like, well, where did that come from? You know, what the heck? And, and basically it's, it's, uh, it's the social economy and Quebec has always had, whether it's been named that or not, it has a, a sort of a social economy. And, uh, and it just, that's part of what it does. It recognizes the value in cooperatives and, uh, and has created some of the most vibrant co-op structures in the world. Um, so 
I, I see um, one of the workshops I was at this morning, they talked about democratizing business and democratizing banking. And I see co-op as a way of doing that. Because when I think about the idea of large networks, I, I have to say there's, a, there's an ongoing, a long time ongoing, uh, I, I wouldn't give it the status of a debate among co-op people, a discussion maybe uh, around beers or something like that, but whether a, 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 an economy totally based on co-ops would ever work. You know, if you could have a, a cooperative economy where basically co-op was the dominant form. There are regions in the world where that's true. If you go to the, the north of Spain, for example, the Mondragon region, there's a, a, an area there that probably has about two, two and a half to three million people in it, um, where the dominant form is the cooperative is cooperatives. Many, 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 most perhaps of the industries are worker co-op industries. Uh, there's huge sectors of co-op housing, there's co-op education. One of the larger uh, uh, grocery chains in Europe is there, it's a, and it's a worker co-op, or it's a, it's a co-op, a consumer co-op. Um, so, so they have found a way, and in fact, they are one of the strongest economic regions in Spain. And to, at times in Spain, even when industrial Spain was was kind of crashing and burning, and there's all you know huge rates of unemployment and stuff, it, the the economy there was, it was stable. It remained stable. They went from uh, their first co-op was started in 1956, and it was in the 1990s before they ever laid off a worker even through the economic downturns and so on. There's another area in Italy where in uh, the Emilia-Romagna area, which was a traditionally a communist area of Italy, and, uh, and they too have a huge part. They've got a, a shipyard there that's been uh, a worker co-op shipyard that's been continuously operating since the 1500s, you know, <laughs> which I think probably puts it as one of the oldest co-ops on the planet. But, uh, but the, when I think about, uh, you know, the kind of scale of co-op activity and, and when you talk about uh, democratizing business, will it ever democratize business? I, I keep having to remind myself that North America is the bastion of capitalism. I mean, this is where capitalism is probably healthier than it is anywhere else on the planet. Well, <laughs> healthier in some respects. Um, but certainly most supported up and down through the, the uh, political environment and the economic environment. And. Uh, you know, and, and when I and, and this is where you know, most of my experience has been. So when I think about democratizing business in North America, I think that's a stretch. You know, and and uh, but certainly I think a mixed economy could be a very healthy economy, as we can see in Quebec. The mix, there's a mixed economy there, uh, and I think that it, that the economy, the economic situation, would benefit greatly from a lot more democratized businesses through the co-op model. Uh, democratized banking, again, you only have to look to the credit union system which you know in 2008 when there were massive amounts of capital dissolved and wasted away uh, just disappeared um, the credit union system stayed strong the credit union system did not hurt a lot from that and and the reason is because credit unions again like cooperatives like other cooperatives they look at their local region and a high proportion of their investments are local so you don't get the, the sort of high speculative earnings. You also don't get the high speculative losses when things crash. So when I think about democratizing business and democratizing banking, co-op comes to mind for me uh, almost instantly. But then again, I'm, I'm dedicated to the model. And uh, there are a number of reasons that I'm dedicated to the model. You know, when I look at the experience of co-ops, not, not necessarily here in BC, because you know, this has never been a particularly supportive environment for cooperatives. But when I look at places where co-ops are, are better known and more supported throughout the, uh, the economic culture, um, and the studies that have been done there, what I see is a case where co-ops, uh, they survive longer. They live, they, they last longer than other types of business do. If you take two businesses in the same economic region and in the same marketplace, the co-op will generally last longer than another form of business will. Um, they have uh, the remarkable uh, um, uh, job retention rates. And again, when other businesses are losing or are, are laying off workers, generally employment in a cooperative is a more stable form of employment than other types of work. 